I need to say this. Yes, people prosper in the world. Psalm 73 and 12 tells us that the, that the wicked prosper in the world. Yes. But their prosperity can't compare to what God has for you and I nope. if we get in the right place. And a lot of them, like, like you say, got sorrow with them. And, 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 and it's a lot of wealthy people that's not saved very unhappy. That's right. So mm -hmm. true prosperity is not just having money, it's, it's, it's having the whole pie. Spirit, soul, and body. Spirit, soul, and body. Right. You have peace. Yes. You healthy. Yes. You got a sound mind. You wealthy. Yes. See, that's, that's true prosperity. Amen. And God wants us in that position so that he can use us for somebody else. He says in uh, first, second Corinthians chapter 1, I believe it is, Verse 3 says, the same comfort that God has comforted us with, we're to comfort others. Yes, right. Yeah. But if you're not comfort, if you are, and that word comfort is not talking about like being in, a, in an easy chair. Mm -hmm. It's talking about having peace right. in, in, in the midst of circumstance. Yeah. If you don't have peace in, circum, in the midst of circumstance, how are you going to help somebody else that's going through the same thing? That's right. Y'all going to be two messes over there in fear. <laughs> Complaining, worrying. Oh, this economy is so bad. I don't know why they put Obama in there. He and did number. I had one guy. I, the lady couldn't even ring, uh, ring up my uh, goods in the store, but he he wouldn't get out the line complaining. He done got his bag all stuff all bagged up, looking back at me. Obama got me in a mess. You know, I don't know where my money coming from, but I'm looking at it. And, and he stopped for a minute. He wanted me to respond. I just, I was quiet. I shouldn't have probably close to that. I should have told him about that. But I was, I was kind of upset with him, so I didn't say that because he was holding me up. <laughs> <laughs> he just sitting there work. Oh, Obama did this to the economy. Obama did that to the economy. And I got a check coming here, but they going to cut. I mean, he's going through all, all the things. You know, yeah, all this. Get out the way. I was in a hurry. But I was going to, I thought I should have, should have ministered to him. But what I'm saying is I didn't get involved in the conversation. Why? Because I don't participate in that. Right. And that's how the world is set up. So yeah, they prosper, people prosper in the world, but you know what's going to happen? That wealth is being transferred right now. <laughs> to, right. To, the, to the right. Now I got a question for you. This, this, now you know how to, I need, I need this. Uh, I got a question. They saying that we don't have any money, right? You know, the, the, the world, the world, the world don't have any money, right? Everything is, you know, they're in debt and all that. Uh, what happened to the money? Did it disintegrate? No. Somebody got it somewhere. They tried. It's still in the, it's, I mean, they ain't burning it. I hope they ain't burning it. <laughs> it's being transferred. Somebody got your money somewhere. That's right. I agree. <laughs> you know why? Because I look at these, I look at these athletes. That we were in such a deficit, they should cut their pay. <laughs> that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> I, I haven't been keeping up with sports for a long time, but my last, the last one that I kept up with was uh, Shaq. Mm -hmm. He was getting two hundred million dollars, two hundred twenty-seven million dollars for seven years. For seven years, two hundred and twenty-seven million dollars to put a, and he don't even do that too good. <laughs> put, a, put the ball in the loop. <laughs> I mean, but, but it's a deficit. The money is still out there. It's money. It's money out there. It's money. We got people with money here. That's right. And you go on St. Armand Circle, there's rich folks out there. It's, it's money around right here. Money, money. But you know what? Yeah. When we position ourselves right, the Bible says that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We are the just. Yeah. And you know what? You can't go around talking about, you know, God ain't going to just take the money from the people. <laughs> if you read the Old Testament, did he yes. take the land from the Canaanites yes. and, the, and the Amorites yes. and all those folks and gave it to his people? Yes. They, they, they worked the land, got all the milk and got everything yes. in place. Yes. Great, yes. They had yes. great good business. Yes. <laughs> yes. And gave it to his people. Right. Right. Yes. Same yeah. God yesterday, yeah. today, and forever. Yeah. Yeah. But you gotta believe that. Yeah. Yeah. And now what what believing that will cause you and I to do is to line our life up the way He wants us to do. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
going to inherit the earth. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. I think it's Psalm 115, 14 says that the uh, earth, God has gave the earth to, to the sons of men. Yes. We have, this is ours. Amen. This is ours. This is God, God owns all the earth. Everything. Everything. And you know what 1 Corinthians 3, 7, might be 7 Corinthians. I mean, there would be no matter. 7 Corinthians, I think. 3, 20 through 21 talks about. No. Yes, yeah, exactly. It says that all everything is ours. Mm -hmm. Everything that that, that he, because he, that's what he know that first Corinthians, because that's what he's talking about Apollo, you know, yeah. and and and, uh, and and those other teachers, and he says that no matter what people say, I'm paraphrasing, everything belongs to us. Everything belongs to us. Why? Because everything belongs to Jesus. We're joint heirs with Christ. So everything that he owns. We own. It yeah. It's ours. Right. But it's but you have to take it by faith. The Bible take it by faith. You know, in uh, Matthew 11 and 12, it, it talks about the, how how we are to get violent. But we're to do that by faith. You don't go out there and beat up people. Oh, no. That's not what it's talking about. We talking about we being violent in our faith. Yeah. yeah. We get we get. Laid back and the devil started talking to us, putting all these thoughts, and we just take it. You gonna die. Mm. God doesn't love you. Mm. You just sitting there saying, You got to get violent. Yeah. And start speaking that word back. Devil, you a liar. I shall not die, but I shall live to declare the word of the Lord. Amen. I am prosperous. My God is not all my needs. Oh, but if we got people around us, we, we, we kind of shy away from that. Fuck those people. Okay. They can't get you into heaven. Okay. You know what I'm saying? We got to get past what, how people feel. And stop. If you're in the mall and the enemy starts attacking your thought life, start speaking the word. Amen. But if you don't believe it, you won't do it. You won't do it. You just sit there and let him beat you up. Oh, I don't know what I, I can't stop these thoughts. I don't know what I'm going to do about these thoughts. He's going to bring all these negative thoughts. And I'm so depressed. Oh, whoa. <laughs> you depressed because of un unbelief. Second Corinthians 10 and 5 says, that's not all imagination is exalted. That's not all imagination that is all itself against the knowledge of God and bringing every thought captive to the obedience of Christ or to the obedience of the Word. Yeah. So I don't have to allow those thoughts to say that. Brother Chuck did an awesome teaching on thoughts. Yeah. We can't stop the birds from flying over our heads, can we? No. But if one lands, you can run it off. Oh, yeah. You can't stop the thoughts from coming, but if it stops, you can run it off. Yeah. You run it off with the Word of God. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. I don't even know where I want to be. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I'm going I'm to skip this. Give me five more minutes and I'll close. I'm going to y'all let you go. Now, just like the Israelites, the knowledge that they had, it didn't, it didn't benefit them. Because they didn't mix it with faith. Yeah. You understand? See, even though, even though people don't have a a personal relationship with God, they have some knowledge. But they don't mix that knowledge that they have with faith. So they never develop their, their relationship with God. Let's, let's look at one more verse and we'll start. Turn to uh, Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4, yeah. But I'm talking, I'm, I am talking about Christians. A lot of them haven't developed a relationship with God. You know? If it hurts you to read your Bible, if it, I mean, oh, God, I mean, you, it's like a chore. Oh, and I got it. Now, don't get me wrong. We all get frustrated sometimes. We all get, well, we don't want to do things sometimes. But I've seen people, well, and you tell me, read, read my Bible. <laughs> and, and this is what most of them say. I don't understand it no way. Well, when I first started reading the Bible, before I got saved, I didn't understand. But when I got saved, and I prayed this prayer, till this day, I always started praying. I said, Lord, 
I thank you for understanding of your word. Yeah, yeah. I thank you for revelation, knowledge, flow, and freedom. I bind up every satanic and demonic spirit that will try to hinder me from understanding your word. And then I say, you give me the understanding is so simple that I'm able to teach others with that simplicity. Yeah, thank you. Amen. So, why did I pray that? Because in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, I believe it's verse 12, it says that the Spirit of God helps us to, and I'm paraphrasing, understand the things of God. When the Holy Spirit comes in you, He helps you to understand the things of God. He, he even prompts you. He even pushes you to read the Bible. Yeah. Right. But if you don't develop your relationship with God, with the Holy and you should get up in the morning speaking to God, speaking to the Holy yeah, Spirit, speaking to me. Yeah. We get up in the morning, oh, I ain't no good till I get my coffee. Uh. <laughs> I met people like that. I ain't no good. I got to have my coffee. But you need Jesus first. Right. Amen. They get up growling. Yep, yep. They get up, oh, Lord, it's another day. <laughs> when you get up, the devil should say, oh, Lord, they up. <laughs> That's right. Amen. He should be trembling. Yeah. <laughs> if he trembled, if the demons trembled because of Jesus, they should tremble because of us. Then, then James said that they believe what they tremble. Yeah. They should be they should be afraid of you. Not because of you, but because of who is in you. That's right. They should see God in you. That's right. That's right. But you know what? Most of them they most of them, they, they are, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, it says, Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, talking about the Israelites. But the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. So it says that what what I'm close here. What it says is that the promise of entering God's rest was preached to them, but it didn't benefit them because they didn't believe it, so they didn't act on it. Today we have the promises of God. Uh, the promise of entering God's rest preached to us, but we're not entering God's rest because we don't believe. If you read verse 3, it, it tells us that's how we enter the rest of God. For we who have believed do enter that rest, mm -hmm. as he has said. So we enter the rest of God through faith. When you're not experiencing God's rest, it's because of unbelief. Unbelief will hinder you from experience. No matter what's happening around us, we should be at peace. We should have peace that passes all mm -hmm. understanding. Yeah. Paul said in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, he says, Be anxious for nothing, but in all things through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And then he says, The peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. So what is he saying? He said we shouldn't worry. We should thank God that we have everything we need. And when you believe that, when you truly see what's going to cause that peace that passes all understanding to guard your heart is faith in God. Faith that is already done. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what, 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 what my body is saying. I don't care what my checkbook is saying. But those things talk to us. I don't care what people are saying. I'm going by what the Word says. Amen. 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 I trust Amen. the Word. I believe the Word of God. Amen. And that's where we got to get. Amen. 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 Did y'all get anything out of that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah.